Hi, this is Tina, and I'm back for part two of our uh, making a flip-flop journal. And um, we, in part one, what we did is we made the base and we covered it and are getting ready to um, put our signatures together and then put them in the journal. And that will be um, the mechanics of how we do it. And that's probably as far as we're gonna go because I think the decorating and all of that, that's kind of a personal thing. It's not really um, a how-to kind of a thing. So um, I don't mind doing that with you, except I don't think, you know, it's gonna be different for everyone. So um, basically what we've done so far though is um, just put, a, put together what you need to have a journal um, other than actual sewing and the signatures, and we will do that. And that, I figure that that's part of the mechanical or the how-to part. Um, there's a few things I'm going to do before I do that, though. On all of our little seams here, we overlap them. So in my opinion, um, see this uh, where they all come together? Um, so that what that does is that reinforces all of these because you're going to be sewing signatures into these and you want them reasonably sturdy, I think. And I think just the paper um, alone for me doesn't, I don't know, I just don't think that's enough. So what I'm going to do is on all of the areas that we have not done that, like here I have this area, I'm just going to take some sari silk and cover that. And I'm just going to use... Um, my art glitter glue to do that. Hopefully it's not clogged up because I haven't used it in a little bit. And I'm just going to put that all along here and I don't care if it's you know on there perfect I just want something and I'm just taking random pieces that I have and I'm going to put them, open them up, and just kind of put them right here. And it doesn't bother me if it's um, not perfectly straight or any of that. In fact, I like it this way. I want it a little bit shabby. That's already dried over there. So anyway, I'm going to put that on there like that. And what that'll do is that is going to reinforce all of those little seams that we have that we do not have anything on okay and I used to do that to all of the seams and everything and then I realized that I could cover it with paper and I'm going to do this one now you could use lace you could use um, seam binding you can use whatever you want you could come back and do this with paper um, would be fine you know no big deal. Like you could just take paper right now and cover this. Matter of fact, I might show you how to do that just in case you want to do it that way. You would just take a piece of paper and cover that portion. Let me get one. That is going to work. It doesn't have half a person on it, right? E. You'd think it would be easy. Okay, here we go. Let's say, for instance, you wanted to just use this instead of. Um, oh boy, I sure I, I cut so crooked. Instead of um, putting the sorry silk on, you could just come back in here and go like that. And see, that looks pretty good. And that reinforces it, too. You do not have to use the sorry silk or whatever else that you have. Um, you know what? Actually, I think... Do I want that going all the way down? I don't think I do. I think I want to stop it right there. So you can just add to the whole uh, look and just do that and then not have to worry about it and just do it on one side, which sometimes looks better. And I don't worry about it um, um, being shabby, as I said, because that's kind of the look I always go for, so I like it to look like it's been around a while. 
So anyway, that would reinforce that. And you wouldn't have to... Um, well, I didn't put enough glue on that, did I? I do not put enough glue. Here we go. Now we're going to get you on there good. So all that's going to do is just um, reinforce that little that little seam so that it stays nice and you know good if you want to sew something in there or just from going back and forth. The same thing on this side. We didn't have anything here. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a piece of paper over here and then we'll put the like in here we'll put the we'll put the sari silk. So, this is what our whole little thing's going to look like. I need my bone folder. Whenever you do that, you just kind of have to go over with the bone folder. So, I've already made this a pocket, and it looks like we need to put a little glue there to make sure that stays together. And so, that is a cover. And here's our insides. Okay, now I had one other portion that did, was not covered, and that is in the middle. Right here is the very middle. And I think I'm going to use um, some sorry silk for that. Just. I just put that in there, but if you don't want to do it that way, if you want to do individual pages and not do that, you could put that, um, you could put the sari silk all the way across. So, you know, and if you want to be super neat, you can. I purposely try not to be. Okay, so that's our cover, and this is our cover, and we will work with that from there. But in the meantime, um, I'm not going to decorate that. What I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and figure out what pages we want to put in here. And what I did on mine is I picked out a bunch of different pages. And I'm going to tell you, um, you can put, I like to put up to about five pages in each signature if I do all five signatures and we'll see okay so I haven't cut this one now I will tell you that um, I have all different sizes in here 
because this is a very going to be a very eclectic um, kind of look. So it's not going to be just a um, you know straight. Like, let's see, that's the same. I don't want to use that twice. So let's just say we use that. Now I know these are going to be too tall. See, they're a little bit too tall. But that's okay. We can cut them all down. I am going to get my pages that I think I want. And I will cut them down as we go. It gives me one, two, three, four, five. That's about what I like. I like about five um, um, pieces, and then I work from that, and I add in like a music page and that type of thing. So I'm going to just take these one at a time, and let's see how tall is our how tall is this. It is nine and a half inches, so we can make our pages nine and a quarter. We could go nine and a half too. It probably wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm going to go ahead and do it the easy way. And I'm going to just make all of these nine and a quarter. Not worried about those, just worried about the taller ones.
So now um, let's just go ahead and start getting our signatures together. Get all these papers over here. Got my little piles. And I don't, like I said, I don't have, now I'm not putting anything right now in this first little section here. I may come back and do that. I don't know yet. I have not decided. So I basically will take my papers and I'll just put them in there. These are my, all of my printed pages. Now on this one, look, see, I, I probably will move it. That's why I'm saying I shouldn't have folded it first. I'm probably going to go, where's the end of this? Probably going to go right here. How wide can I make this? And I'm just using my journal. I don't do a lot of measuring if I can help it. Um, so that can go. I'm using it to decide where I'm going to fold. Okay. So I can do that. Or, let's see, I could have done that. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe I do that. Okay. Let's do that. Let's see. Okay, so I can put this in there like that and then have this fold over. Or I can go like this. Let's see here. How much of that will go in like there. So basically the way I can have it, I can have it multiple ways. I can have it to where this comes out like that. Um, I could have it to where this goes in and then this goes out like that. Let's see here. Which part do I want? Um, or I could have it go like that and have a whole piece, which I think is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to have this go in there like that. So I want to put, here is another one like that. How do we want to fold it? It could go the other way too. Um, I don't want to fold her in half her face. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go about like that. And I'm going to put that in here and then I'm just going to fold this to where it comes out. So we'll put that there. And then we'll put, you know what, let's see, I have to move. This can go there, that can go there.
All right, so we've got that, that, and that. So that's the other signature. So we've got everything kind of sort of worked out as far as the pages that we're going to put in there. And now we're going to add our other pages. And that's where I divide those up. Um, all right. So I am going to put these in there. And I'm going to go ahead and go... Where's my ruler? I'm going to go... These are four and a half inches. I'm going to go like four and a quarter on these. It's about right here. And I'm not going to fold them all the same way. I'm going to do some of them different. But um, So I'm going to do one like that and it will come out and it'll just be like that. So that can go in any one of these. It doesn't matter. So I always try and break up my pages as much as I can. And I leave the edges raggedy in there, so that's fine. Did I fold that enough? I might not have. I might not have. I might not have. No, it looks like it's okay. Barely. I don't know. I might have to go in a little. I might have to. Oh, I can just cut it or something. Well, let me see. I thought I measured it right, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't measure it right. There we go. I hate to fold these pages too many times because they're old and they're more brittle. So, all right. So here we go. That's going to go here. We decided, right? Okay. So now we're going to do another one in here. And on this one, I'm going to do it in half. And then I'm going to go back and go about right here. Let's make sure. Yeah, I'm just going to do right at four just to make sure that I have plenty of room there. And then those will, that'll form like a little tuck spot. So we'll put that in here. So that's our other signature. And now we've got the one over here. And we'll do one for in there. And I think I'll do that the same. And I like all these little ra raggedy edges, so I purposely don't fix those. But if you want to, you definitely can. I don't, you know. And I don't do a lot of measuring and cutting, and I used to do that, and I don't anymore. I actually think that the journal ends up looking uh, much more like it's naturally curated and collected. You know, rather than you just purposely put everything together and... Um, okay, so I've got these. These are some Edith Holden's. I don't know how many of those I have. I, had, I thought I had three. I do. Okay. I want to put one of those in each one. And I'm going to go like that. Of course, you could do it, you know, the other way and then have them fold out, but some beautiful pages. Like I said, this is going to be a very eclectic type journal. It does seem to have a blue and a fashion theme somewhat, but I don't. I wouldn't say that that's like the theme. I think the theme is, you know, um, papers that I have <laughs> left over. But. I love making journals like that though because you just never know how they're going to, you just don't know how they're going to turn out. You know, they just, they evolve. Okay, I don't know if that looks good there, but I'm going to, I'll put it there for now just for groans. Um, I never know how I'm going to leave things until like the very last minute when I go to 
so in a signature and then I go oh, I'll move that move this no nothing ever stays the same okay so now let's see I have um, some French book pages and some other pages that I want to put in but I kind of have to get those ready because some of these they need a little bit of um, tape and things on them all right let's move these aside for a second you can see how the journals ought to get pretty chunky already so I'm gonna get um, if I can get to it there we go let's see this is my washi tape and I think this one I'm just gonna put in sideways so it doesn't really matter so that's okay I've got some French book page here and how do I want to do that do I want to put them in sideways maybe I'll just do that and then that way I won't have to if it feels brittle to me then I put the washi tape if it doesn't then I don't mess with that so I will put similar types in piles. Now see this one feels a little brittle so I'm going to put some tape on that just because you know I don't want it to fall apart. Take that off of there. Yeah, if something feels brittle to me, then I put washi tape on it. And, you know, that doesn't mean that it's not going to fall apart at some point in the future, but it, it'll last a little bit longer. So. Okay. All right. Lots of pages here. I think this one I'm going to leave. No, because then I have to. I don't want to have to um, fold these. Like I don't want. I don't want to have to fold these or cut them. So I'd rather go in half. Yeah, this one's. These are all like from the 1800s. So it's kind of amazing they're all in one one piece anyway. If y'all are ever buying books, it's getting harder and harder to buy these for a decent price. But um, if you buy them, I bought mine on eBay um, probably two or three years ago. Um, but I noticed if you buy in a lot instead of like just individually, it's usually a lot cheaper. And that goes for lace or trim or anything because um, people are we like trying to get rid of stuff yeah and I pick my papers just out of interest uh, what you know different languages and different types and different fields and all that kind of stuff just so it looks um, I have a lot of French stuff but I also have other um, Spanish German all kinds of stuff And I also go by, I like to have different fonts and different um, different um, patinas on the paper. Like I usually put ledger paper in there, but I'm not going to do that in this one. Now this is a um, dictionary page. That's in pretty good shape, so I'm not going to worry about that. I don't know why I picked two of all of these. That's kind of weird, but oh well. Oh, I remember because I'm using these on the ends. I forgot. Oh, I forgot what I was going to do. Okay. So anyway, I am going to... All right. I am going to divide these up into two different 
stacks of like kinds. And of course, you don't have to do it that way. Do it any way you want. Okay. Now this is the odd man out, so I'll move that aside. Okay, so I am going to put these Where'd my journal go? These are going to go up. Where did that thing go? Okay. See this portion right here? These are going to all go in here. And they're going to all go kind of staggered. Right? Like that. Somewhat like that. So those are going to go up here. And the same thing with the other side. So we're technically going to have another signature. We're just, um, we're just, you know, not having any uh, journal, necessarily journal pages in there. And that's what's cool about using these sideways like that is that you can um, have add a lot of interest and um, add a whole nother signature and see they fit in there perfectly. So that's what we're going to do there. Okay, so uh, I'm not putting anything fill out. I'm not putting anything right here, but I am. So it's going to be a total of five signatures really. Now, the other thing that I'm going to add, if I can find out where I put them, I don't know where, oh, here they are. I put um, just some coffee dyed paper. So, and we have three signatures. So I'm going to just, let's see, I have certain kinds of paper. Let me move my washi tape. And I'm going to go ahead and use this. Um, I'm not going to not use it. Okay, so I have this as kind of a, these are papers that I um, copy dyed after I printed. I really like how they look. I, lo I actually love them. I think I have three. So, and then I'll put, I'm trying to put similar types of papers in each one.
All right, so now we have what we're going to put left in our signatures here. Um, you could put um, other blank pages in here too, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to go ahead and, is this my one stack over here? Yeah, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. Okay, that's going to go there. And then this is going to go here. That's going to fold over. And I think this can go here. And let's see, I think this can go right here. So that will go like that, okay? And then, you can see how full this is getting already, huh? Let's go to this one. Okay, we've already done that. Alright, this is the one where we don't have two, so we've got to go over to the back side. And there's two signatures here we're going to try and work with. And I am going to put this in the front. Right here, and then I think right here this would be pretty. <clears throat> and then I think we need one right here. Okay, so that's the other one. I don't think that gives us one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's going to give us ten. Um, you really don't want more than ten pages in each signature, guys. I promise. That's actually a lot, um, but that's what I do. I usually do about ten. So that is basically how our signatures are going to be put together. So you have seen the whole thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera. And I'm going to go ahead and sew in all the signatures. And I'm going to save one so that I can show you how to do the five hole pamphlet stitch and how you sew these in. But this is basically it. These are our signatures. They're ready to go. Okay. And um, after that, it's just decorating your journal, all right? So I'm gonna stop the camera and then um, I will sew all these in and then I will show you on the last one how to do it and you'll, you'll see how we do it. Um, I may just go ahead and um, save one of these also so that you know how to do that. So I will be right back. Okay, so I have sewed in um, three actually yeah, three signatures, so they're all in there. Um, I'm including this little small signature here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do these. This is the um, bigger signature in the middle. And then I'm going to show you how to do the one on the end. And that'll be it. So anyway, you just take your um, signature that we put together and you just want to take it in the middle. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Nothing's upside down. Um, if you need to move the pages at all, you know, now's the time. I kind of stagger them a little bit. Um, and so I have already sewed in the other signatures, but when I'm doing these on this five hole, um, pamphlet stitch in the um, flip-flop journals. I The other signatures that I'm not sewing in, if they're not already sewed in, I'll have them off to the side. I don't have them sitting in there getting in my way. But I've already sewed in the other one. So now we're going in the middle. So I'm just going to eyeball this and get it to where it's in the middle. Um, making sure I don't have too much room on top or too much room on the bottom. I take a long paper clip and I paper clip one side um, up here and that holds all my pages in place and I paper clip the other side like that 
and I kind of fold it up, make sure that it, it's down there as far as it can go. Okay, and then I take my awl, and I, I, I just eyeball it. If you want to make a template, you can. Um, because these are not sitting side by side, you're not going to know whether or not um, the holes are even with the other ones, so it's not going to really matter. So I don't worry about a template on this, but you certainly could make one. So we're doing a five hole pamphlet stitch. And the first thing I do is I do the, I just punch the middle hole and I eyeball the middle. I hold it as tightly shut as I can because I want to make sure when I do this that it is going through this line and it's not going off to the side. You want to make it centered on your fold, okay? So that's one, that's the middle. Then I go up toward the uh, top. I go about an inch from the top and I punch a hole and make sure that it's going where it's supposed to be. And I do the same thing on the other side, an inch from the top or the bottom, whatever, which one you want to call it. So we're going to do that again, an inch. And I'm getting my other pages out of the way. You can clip those and make it easier. Um, so I'm just guesstimating. And now what I'm going to do is, I, I don't think you can see it, but there's a hole here and a hole here, and I'm going to punch right in the middle of it and holding it kind of shut to make sure that it's getting right on the middle part, that it's not going off to the side. And then I'm here's my middle and here there, and I'm going to go ahead and go kind of in the middle of that. Okay? So those are my five holes. Okay? Then the next thing that I do is I go ahead and thread my needle, and I just have a long needle. Um, just it helps you, um, you know, with finding your paper. So, and I do about two and a half times the length of my book, which is probably way more than I need. But I always take a paper clip and I just loop it around one time. I don't tie a knot, and I do that so that. My string won't go through the middle. It just helps me out. Um, I don't always do it, but I think it's good practice. It just makes it easier in case it, it does that. So then anyway, all you're going to do on a five hole pamphlet stitch, and I'm going to show you this diagram because you may want to, it's not pretty, but it'll tell you what to do. I'm going to put this up here and then you guys can freeze the camera if you want to. And that way you can um, take a picture of that yourself. Okay, so you can kind of tell how you do it. Okay, so what you do is you go in the middle, okay, and you're going to go up through the back. All right. Then you're going to go uh, either up or down. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think on my diagram I went up, so I'll do that. But it doesn't matter. You can go up or down. Your book doesn't know if it's upside down or not. So then you're, you ended up on the outside because we started in the middle on the inside. So then I'm trying to get these pages out of the way. Maybe I should clip these so that you guys can see better. That way it won't bother. It doesn't bother me, but it might bother you watching. So at that point, um, we've gone through the middle, so we're going to go up. So if we've already gone through the middle, then that means we either have to go up or down, and we go straight in, and it should go straight in if you kept your book, if you've kept it um, um, closed like this. And also you have it paper clipped. You shouldn't have a problem. And then you come up and you come up. You're going to come up through. Now you're in the inside. So now you're going to go to the top. To the outside. Okay. And now that you're in the outside, you're going to go back in the inside. But you're not going to go up here. You're going to go up to where you just came out of here. You're going to come back up here. So that would be the second hole. You went from the top hole to the second hole. And you would think you'd go back through the middle, but you're not. You're going to go all the way up 
to this hole, which would be your hole right up here. This is your second hole from the bottom. So you're going to go up there. You skipped the middle, okay? And now you're going to go to the very last hole right here. If you are on the outside, then you're going to go on the inside. If you're on the inside, you're going to go on the outside. That's just that's the only thing you have to remember. Okay, and then we're going to do basically the same thing that we did at the bottom. We're at the top hole, and now we're going to go back to the second hole. And then we're going to go back through the middle. And this is the last one. So you have to end up at back through the middle, and you try not, and on this one and that one, when you're going back through a second time, and also on the third one, you want to not pierce your um, previous thread. Because if you do that, what it'll do is it'll keep you from being able to tighten up your, your journal. If you ever get to the point where you're not, you can't tighten the journal up, the strings up, then that means you've pierced a thread somewhere, which is not the end of the world. You just undo it and redo it. So then you come through the middle and you should end up with two strings in the middle. And then I just pull this off. It shouldn't be hard. I don't know why today it's hard, but it is. Not supposed to be hard. And I end up with a, a string on each side. Okay. And you take your paper clips off that you had holding your papers in. Otherwise you really can't tighten it up. These don't really matter. Um, and you just tighten it. And I usually put um, two knots, sometimes three. And then um, that is it. That's all you do. Cut them off. So that is it. Now I'm going to show you really quick how we do this part up here. And it's the same way. Um, this is just another signature, but our papers are all um, varied, so it's a little different. The way that I put the papers in is I just stagger them, and I start here. And I'll put one over here, and then I'll put one in the middle, and then I'll put one over here, and then one over here, and then that's it. Okay, so I just make sure that they're inside um, the top and the bottom, that they're not hanging over. And again, I'll just take a couple paper clips just to kind of keep these in place while I'm sewing it in. Make sure that it's in there nice and tight. Um, not, not a huge deal. And you see this one's a little loose, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and get my string. And I use a five hole pamphlet stitch anytime I have a lot of staggered papers like this, um, not just on a longer journal, and any journal that's over like eight, eight and a half inches tall, because then that way if there's any straggly papers there, you're catching all of them. Now here's the thing on this, guys. You technically don't have to punch your holes beforehand because this is so thin and that you don't need a template. So we could just go through with, if you have a sharp needle, and go through and not even punch a hole first. So we're, oh, I didn't put my little paper clip on there. I don't always, but this is just so that it doesn't go through. It's not a big deal. But anyway, so I'm, I, I'm not punching the hole ahead of time. Um, and on, on something like this, you really don't have to because you're not lining them up. Um, let me move this out of the way. So then I'm going to go through the, my next hole is going to be the second one. And this needle is not all that um, not all that sharp, so this may not work for me. So we've gone through the second one, and then we're going to go through the top. And this one is not an inch, it's probably a half inch. And I'm going through there. Now I'm going to come back up through the second one that we just hit a little while ago. All right. And all, all the while I'm trying not to pierce my previous thread. 
And then we're going to skip the middle and go up through here. And I haven't punched a hole yet, but I'm going to. Just hold it as tight like that as you can. All right, and now we need a hole up, one more hole up on top. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to pierce it right in there. Okay. And then we're going to come back up through this one right here. And again, not piercing our previous thread. And then we end up in the middle. So we're going to come back through the middle. All right. And that's it. That is all we do. And then just take off your paper clips because you can't really tighten it with those on there. And I always have way too much thread. And I just make sure that each of my thread, I have one on each side so that I'm tying in. I'm putting it, putting it in the middle there. And then just tighten it. And that is your journal. And you just do that on every signature. Um, you know, go back through and watch it a few times slowly. Um, look at the diagram. It will make sense if you look at it. And that's it, guys. This is a very chunky, big journal. And um, it really did not take all that much to do this. So now the fun part is the decorating. Um, you can definitely uh, cover these up if you want to and put, uh, you know, washi or put um, any kind of uh, sari silk or anything you want on there. But anyway, that is, that is the construction of a flip-flop journal. And technically it has five signatures in it, so uh, not, not a small journal. All right, guys, that's all I have on this. And hopefully um, this helps some people out, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.